I'm Kevin Casey. I'm a professional mixed martial arts fighter. And right now, what I'm about to do is issue a warning out to all other competitors. He is terrible! I don't want overs. I just expect them to happen. Next up, women's... Oh, fuck this. Um, Viviane <laughs> Ferreira yep. against J.D. Moyo. Jay, what, what's going on here? Welcome to this week's edition of the MMA Analysis Podcast. I am your host, Brad Taschuk. We got a three-man crew today. We're uh, we're missing the Sodsman, the Kentucky Sodsman. He's uh, taking care of some important issues, you know, a little a little pet problem. So, uh, thoughts and prayers to to Wesley and his dog. Uh, T's and peas. Absolutely, T's and peas, Wesley. Uh, <laughs> I am joined by Jay Primetown. Jay, how's it going? Uh, you know, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, you know, T's and P's to West and uh, the little canine. Um, but uh, yeah, we're back again. Pretty cool. I like. Uh, you know, I love. I usually really look forward to the Rio pay per view each year. Um, usually, there's some sort of chaos that happens. You know, really uh, pumped up crowd. So um, I feel like MMA is infinitely better when the crowd is really behind it. Absolutely. Yeah. The the Swedish crowd last week was. Not bad, you know. There just wasn't enough Swedish guys for them to cheer for, uh, but you know, when you're in Brazil, that's never really a problem. So, should be a, a good, good atmosphere this weekend down in Rio. Sean, what are you up to? Not much. No, I'm excited for the uh, NBA finals to start. It's only taken fucking two week, a two week break, and and obviously the teams that are playing are who everybody thought was going to be playing at the start of the year. So we probably <laughs> could have fun. just not even had the season and just just keep playing the the uh, Warriors and the Cavs. Yeah, that, uh, that probably could have worked. I don't think anybody would have complained too much. There should be, like, two NBA playoffs. One for the Warriors and Cavs and then one for everybody else. And whoever wins that second set of playoffs, they get the first-round pick the following year. Because <laughs> then they actually have a shot, a shot to shot to actually yeah to challenge, right? do something. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that's that's what the Celtics got. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> Very true. Uh, all right. So we are going to be chatting about UFC 212 today. But before we get into that, uh, I I don't pay attention to MMA news. So Jay, did I miss anything? Roy Nelson went to Bellator. Jay, did I miss Fatties. anything? <laughs> <laughs> I saw something today about uh, Alex- Alexander Slomenko finishing Brandon Halsey in 12 seconds. Tapping the strikes. Yeah. I, Literally, did you see any of that, Brad? I actually saw that video. It's, I don't know, it, it was a body kick. Halsey's been stopped by body kicks before. God, he is Didn't look like the hardest thing in the world, but Russia going to Russia. Man, that guy's come crashing down the earth, hasn't he? Remember when people thought he was starting to creep into like the top fifteen? Who? What was his big win? How did he become champion? Uh, didn't he dominate Shulmanko? That's what I thought, right? Yeah. Oh, has time changed? Dominated Shulmanko. <laughs> he got. He was like a twelve hundred favorite and got kicked in the body against. Uh, Brazilian right? Carvalho. 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 And then just. Did he lose to Kendall Grove? Or did he, no, he beat Kendall Grove. That was a title fight. He lost. He to beat Slomenko else. in thirty seconds. Yeah, he took him down and just destroyed him. Yeah, rear naked so now choke. they need to do the rubber match, but the fight is only allowed to be thirty seconds long. If neither of them finishes in the first thirty seconds, it's just no contest. And it has to be in international waters because one was in <laughs> in Bellator and the other was in Russia. So now go. we do international waters. Canary or, Islands work. or Switzerland. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Swiss, fourth ranked light heavyweight in the world, Volkan Ozdemir. Holy shit. Just bringing the pain, taking over at 205. We'll get to that. But uh, let, let's just go bottom up on the Sweden card. Uh, fight pass, lightweight division. Demir Hadzovic defeats Marcin Held. Lost the first two rounds, and then smoked held with a knee seven seconds into the third round. 
Darren Till defeats Yesin Ayari by unanimous decision. Uh, came in a little bit overweight, a lot of overweight. Uh, kind of still kind only of, throwing lefts. <laughs> exactly, kind of the good overweight, uh, left, as left, we left. like to say. And yeah, just just all left hands worked for him, and then uh, you know told his daughter to go to bed at noon for silly time. Oh, nice, nice guy. Yeah, that's you. Better be in bed. Uh, Fox Sports won prelims, welterweight division. Boyan Velikovic defeats Nico Masoke. Lost the first two rounds. And then got a finish with 23 seconds left. KO punches. Masoke was, was doing some kind of chicken dance. Whew. That was, that was the, new, the new hotness in the Atlanta streets, from what I hear. <laughs> uh, the, the kids out in the high school parking lots are, are doing the Masoke. Uh, lightweight division. Joaquin Silva defeats Reza Madati, split decision. I thought they were going to give it to Reza, but uh, they did give the the correct decision, in my opinion. Um, but it would have been nice to see Reza get that if this does turn out to be his last fight. Middleweight division, Trevor Smith can wrestle a little bit. Chris Camozzi cannot. Unanimous decision. Bantamweight division, Pedro Munoz is better than Damian Stasiak, but not as much as we expected him to be. Uh, he also won a unanimous decision. Jay, thoughts on those prelims? Yeah, um, I guess where do we start? I mean, how bad is Chris Camozzi? <laughs> bad enough that he's not in the UFC anymore. That's right. Um, I guess you couldn't give him any good advice, uh, new Sean? Nope. He, uh... I worried. I told him about the leg kicks, but I forgot about the whole stuffing the uh, takedowns and not getting the shit beat out of you. Part. I mean, holy yeah. cow! Holy cow! Um, terrible. Darren Till thinks he's a future champion. Let's. He, sh- he probably needs to. You know, he someone needs to tell him that 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 MMA fights are longer than two rounds. Um, that might be a good start. Um, and you know, Reza. Reza fought a pretty decent fight um, against this Silva dude, um, but you have to give Silva credit with the crowd kind of roaring. Like he, he turned it on um, and deservedly won. Um, I thought. I mean, yeah, for a big juiced up Brazilian, he had way better cardio than I expected. Oh, yeah. he sure did. Um, he kind of reminded me a little bit of um, uh, Trator. Yeah, um, the tractor man. Like, yeah, tractor man. Just like being like. Super top heavy, um, kind of a similar body shape, uh, but this guy's definitely a way better striker than, than Trator. Um, but yeah, solid win. Um, it is what it is. I mean, I mean it's, you really can't really root for Reza, can you? I mean, he's not a good guy. I could root for Reza. Yeah, he yeah, snatches purses. I don't care about petty yeah. theft, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> he's not doing serious crimes. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. He's just taking rich people's purses. Exactly. That's right. Nothing wrong with that. He's, he's kind of like Robin Hood, if you think about it. Sort of. But Swedish, so he's probably got two dots on, you know, the hood and the dot dot thing on top. And Robin's yeah. spelt like a, with a Y, and he's a pop singer. I like it. <laughs> Sean, what were your thoughts on the prelims? Damn, Marcin Hell just cannot catch a break. I he mean, got, he caught he got like a broken skull. <laughs> he got a he got deaded. That's what he caught. Um, yeah, he got robbed against uh, like Joey Lozon. That was that was pretty rough. And then he, he, he wins two rounds against Hedzovic and gets deaded with the old flying knee. Isn't it isn't it funny when people were bragging about how they they, they saw this fight coming and the Hasidic thing? I'm like, guys, this guy was this guy was dead to rights after two rounds and. If he didn't land, if he didn't land coming in, he would have been taken down there, and that would have been the end of the fight. Yeah, it was literally. It was I don't know if he would have got chance. taken down there because Held was going inverted for his like leg locks. Yeah, so, it was kind of weird. He was dropping for a leg, but regardless, he probably was going to. Yeah, he took him down easily in the first two rounds. Yeah, oh, easily. So probably would have failed, and then got a takedown later on, and, and got like a thirty twenty seven decision. Yep. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a bad one, but uh, luckily I'll take it. I, I took a small stab at at both the the two uh, dogs, big dogs on the uh, the fight pass card there, and one of them luckily hit, so that was good plus money. It's, it's um, almost like you told people to do that on the podcast too. Yeah, you get lucky every once in a while. I'll, <laughs> I'll take some luck on that because Ayari was pretty much dominated. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't good. 
Yeah, but uh, and then uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't get our uh, Pedro Munoz Munoz finish. Uh, he, he, Stasiak wasn't really in trouble at all. I thought uh, one of those one of those guillotines when he when he had the head in position, he was going to get it, but didn't seem really close. It wasn't an overly impressive uh, fight. Maybe Stasiak is better than we thought, and yeah, maybe that's about it. Sometimes ju- guys just have the right style to match up with. Yeah, they just super yeah they just kind of cancel out, and then it's kind of a boring but fairly one sided fight. But yeah. yeah. Anyways, moving up to the main card, kicked it off in the middleweight division. Jack Hermanson took uh, racist Alex Nicholson down to the ground and beat the shit out of him. TKO at two minutes. Welterweight division, Nordine Taleb defeats Oliver Enkamp by unanimous decision. Again in the welterweight division, three fights in a row here. Uh, Omar Yakhmedov defeats Abdul Razak Al-Hassan by split decision. Uh, a couple 30-27s and a 29-28 going the other way. Gotta love that. <laughs> yeah, at least it wasn't 30-27 going the other way. <laughs> yep. Uh, and our other play on the card, Peter Sabata uh, pretty much dominated Ben Saunders. TKO in the second round just before the halfway mark of the fight. Was that a, a one and a half total or a two and a half total? Oh, that had to have been two and a half. That's what I would have said. They're not, they're not that big of finishers. Yeah, it was two and a half. Okay. Because I was going to say that uh, that could have been a tricky one for uh, for people that bet the over or under, but uh, under definitely came through in that one, and uh, we ended up breaking even because both of the bets that we played were plus a hundred. As I mentioned earlier, light heavyweight division Volkan Ozdemir defeats Misha Serkinov, twenty eight seconds of the first round, just, just knocked him down with a punch. So a couple big favorites went down on this card for sure. And in the main event, the big favorite did not go down. A good performance from Alexander Gustafsson. Just pretty much landed everything he wanted to on Glover. Looked like the fight, you know, through the, the third and fourth round was going to go to decision. And then Gustafsson just just threw uppercuts. and, and Hammered on the fucking B button. <laughs> did not understand that uh, an uppercut is a punch you're allowed to defend. So, so he just ate a shitload of them, and and they got crushed with a right hook, I think. Violent stuff. Violent, violent stuff. Good ending for the people in Sweden. Jay, main card thoughts? Yeah, it was a pretty entertaining main card. Um, I mean, Nordin Taleb is, I would say, is pretty much a gatekeeper at this point, and a pretty damn good one in that welterweight division. Um, he doesn't lose to real scrubs, at least not anymore. Um and, you know, fairly solid performance. He did what he had to do. Um, Alassane what, what was... Were there ne- people that were actually scoring that fight for Endcamp? Only Joe Rogan and, and uh, whatever they were talking about. They said they didn't know who won the fight. I said, really, guys? So you got to be high off your balls and not paying attention for yeah. you to score it for Endcamp. That's fair. That's fair. He, he didn't land anything significant. <laughs> Maybe he landed one significant strike the entire fight. Um, the Alassane thing, I mean, okay... I mean, he beat Charlie Ward in a minute and a half. I mean, if you thought he was... I mean, he has big-time power, and he's athletic. Yeah, sure. Um, but we, no one really had an idea what he was going to do if extended in this fight. His um, cardio wasn't even that bad, either. Yeah, there's worse. Good, but just but... just that, all this talk about him being a judoka, I mean, I'm not sure where he's... You know, I, is this like Brazil with black belts? Like, like they just give these out of McDonald's or something, Ooh, or shoot. Whippies or no? He's this from is, I mean, he's from Cameroon, like Sokaju. Yeah, that's legit, <laughs> legit judoka. Yeah, that's oh, that mean, jungle just, judo. I, man, I, I'm not going there tonight. Um, uh, Sabata was maybe outside of Gustafson might have been the most impressive uh, performance. Um, on the card, I mean, he really, you know, he took it from start to finish. Striking was beautiful. Time things. Fought a really smart fight um, against Ben Saunders. I, I was really impressed. Um, I think there's more room for growth even for him at this point. Yeah, he's and super then Gustav- underrated. Yeah, he really is. Um, and this this fight was a gift. I'm not sure we're going to get as many gifts on him in the future, but it is what it is. And the Gustav fight was really it was one of the better fights of the year. I mean, I was entertained throughout. Um, but yeah, you could see that Gustafson's a different class than Glover. Um, just a much better striker, just much more technical. Um, I think people get a little frustrated by the, I guess, the kind of running away kind of feel, thing. But 
I mean, do you really blame him for not wanting to stand in the pocket with that dude? And nope. again, it, it's the type of quote unquote running away where you come right to the center of the octagon, reset, and start kicking the guy's ass again. Yeah. So, yep. <laughs> there's, yeah, you can't be all that upset about it. Sean, thoughts on the mid card? He enjoyed Nicholson getting his uh, brain, uh, brain beat in a, a bit and I then believe watching him. Refer to as uh, comeuppance. <laughs> ah, that is what that is. And then he protested while he was still wobbly, which was always enjoyable when fighters do that. Uh, I guess the fade plan on Al Hassan came a little too early. I didn't think um, Akhmedov would be the, the one to do it. I thought his. His striking defense would be too shitty, and, and Alisson would catch him. But what can you do? Uh, Im- impressive fight by Sabata. That was a one-sided beatdown. Um, shitty thing is, supposedly he hurt his hand in this fight, and he's actually having a surgery where they take a, bo- a piece of bone from his hip and put it into his hand. That sounds. That doesn't sound good. That, it sounds, that sounds terrible. Good going to turn into repeated broken hands. Yeah, so I don't know how long he's going to be out for, so that's kind of a bummer. Um, Yeah, Serkinov just signs a new contract and gets flatlined in 28 seconds. Uh, It's uh, it's good stuff. Good stuff there. And uh, the Gus Gus did what uh, I kind of expected him to do. I I thought he would dominate. Um, I thought he was going to get the finish a bit earlier. I mean... Glover is so tough. It's it's even at this age, it's crazy. Um, I was hoping my doesn't start round five with a cash, but what can you do? And yeah, obviously, as a Gus fan, I I don't like seeing him run the way he does, and it's it's not really because whatever. I mean, it does look bad, and in close fights, in the judges, I don't think they they like seeing that. But I mean, if if there's some, I mean, Glover did kind of swarm him that one time, and and he was doing the same thing that JDS. Did and that that Overeem has been caught by when he's doing this running, he, he doesn't really protect his head, and they can clip him, and it's it's not good. Like there's got to be a better way. Like I I don't I'm not mad at him for doing that. Like quote unquote running because I mean he then he like you said he goes to the center and we start start fighting again. But for safety wise, I don't know. That doesn't seem like the greatest thing to do. But what do I know? I just can't wait until one of the guys that does this gets uh, Chris Horodesky again. Yeah, the old head kick. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's already happened. Like JD got JDS got cracked <laughs> yeah. doing it, and yeah. and didn't over him as well. Like it's it's not like it hasn't been done. So I don't know. <laughs> but still a very good win by Gustafson, and uh, hopefully we get to see a, a sweet rematch with uh, John Jones. That seems to be what's in the cards if Jones ends up beating Cormier. Except Dana came out today and said that fucking what's his face is getting the winner <laughs> jimmy manoa oh. get the fuck out of here well, dana yeah we, we don't, don't we don't listen to your bullshit yeah i think there's a better chance that vulcan ozdemir is getting the next title shot than jimmy manoa here we go <laughs> oh god hey man he's there he's there he's right there he's got two top 10 wins in a row i mean, I mean he, he does that's though. more than gustafson he does <laughs> Uh, all right, we're going to move on to UFC 212, as we mentioned. Coming up from Brazil on Saturday evening, we're going to get right into it. Kicking it off, UFC Fight Pass, flyweight division. We've got Marco Antonio Beltran taking on Davison Alcantara Figueiredo. Jay? Mm. Mm. Yes, uh, cool. Tremendous fight to start the card. Really tremendous fight. Um, I can't wait to see it. Can you guys? Nope. Yeah, I don't think so. I got Beltran at D and uh, Alcantara at D+. Plus. Beltran's, I think, surprisingly 3-1 and one in the UFC. Um, I... But the thing is, he can't defend the takedown. Um, I think Alcantara, you know, there's, been a, there's a little hype around him because there's been a couple of YouTube clips of some flashy KOs, but he's got terrible striking defense and if he's if he actually stands with beltran he could definitely get knocked out but again beltran terrible terrible takedown defense alcantara you know fairly capable in the wrestling game and as a submission game too so if he takes it to the ground i mean he's got good ground and pound and i think uh, a submission is definitely in the cards so 
I like Alcantara because he's got more tools. Um, Beltran's only going to do decently in a striking exchange. So um, I'll take Alcantara to win, but um, he's not great, and I don't expect him to do much in the UFC. So um, Alcantara, I'll pick him by sub, let's say, round two. Sure. Yeah, I don't know too much about Alcantara. Um, I did see some of those flashy things that uh, Jay was talking about, but uh, kind of weird. Like he, he was in Jungle Fights, which is an okay British or Brazilian uh, promotion, and then uh, so he had a good streak in there. And then his last fight, he fought a guy that was one and two. <laughs> so uh, who I knows who's himself. who's. Brazil is just making some. Oh, you you, you want to fight or something? We'll give you this one and two guy, even though you're you know ten and zero oh and have fought in one of the higher up like local uh, local promotions. But whatever. Um, have yeah, and I don't really. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really think too much of, of Marco Beltran. He's uh, he's one of the lower lower uh, end Mexican fighters. Um, yes, he yeah, is. I could, could definitely see uh, he's been subbed a bunch of times, and uh, I could definitely see uh, Alcantara grabbing something here. Yeah, I'm on the same track as you guys. Uh, I think Alcantara is pretty decent. I think something else that's really going to help him and usually helps Brazilian fighters early on the card is the crowd is there from the first fight, and they're hyped up from the first fight. So. It gives these guys a boost, uh, especially him being his UFC debut. Uh, I think he's really going to jump on that early. As Jay said, you know, there's a, a little danger if he stays on his feet because he is hittable. But in terms of what these guys can do on the ground, he's just miles ahead of Beltron. Uh, I think he ends up getting this fight to the mat, advancing pretty quickly, and uh, securing himself a sub. So, you know, this is a little off the wall, but... This isn't the greatest betting card in the world. Uh, our first 5dimes.eu consensus bet of the evening is going to be Alcantara by sub, plus 456, and uh, and we're going to throw a half unit on that instead of our, our standard unit play. So plus 456 by sub for Alcantara, half a unit. Head over to 5dimes.eu to pick up that prop. Next up, we're moving to the welterweight division, where Luan Chagas takes on Jim Wallhead. Judo Jimmy. That's right. I got Chagas D+, plus, Wallhead D. I mean, to me, Wallhead, you know, fairly tough, but basically a punching bag at this point. Um, Chagas, younger, um, aggressive. You know, I like that. I like that mix. I think Chagas wins. I think this is a tough fight for Wallhead to go down to Brazil in general and try to win a fight. Um, you know, honestly, I don't really think it's UFC material, period. Um, and had just as a little name recognition because of fighting in Cage Warriors and whatnot. So um, I'll take Chagas here. Um, but the line is a little bit bloated for me to, to make a bet on. Um, he's still relatively unknown, um, but he should get the job done in this one. Sean? Yeah, Chagas is kind of a weird fighter because he's he's o one and one in the UFC, but he's actually shown a little bit against uh, some all right and dangerous fighters. You know, he went to the to the split draw with Marias, and uh, and he kind of smashed on Silva for a bit, but then he ended up losing uh, late in that fight. Uh, agree with Jay Wallhead is is not UFC caliber. He's he's not good, and and Chagas is in Brazil. Uh, I'm not betting Chagas, but he should uh, finally get his first UFC win. Chagas is definitely the more talented fighter here, but man, those cardio issues that he has. <laughs> you know, he rocked Sergio Moraes how many times in that fight and then just gassed out hard and ended up getting dominated late. He was beating the shit out of the shittiest version of Eric Silva. And then gassed out and got stopped in the third round by Eric Silva. Yeah, you know your cardio's bad when. <laughs> so I don't care that he's probably going to beat the shit out of Jim Wallhead early in this fight. He's going to gas, and Jimmy Wallhead is, is going to stop him in the third round. So 
Oh, you know, I'm, shit. I'm, I'm all in on the plus 1,800 here. And by all in, I mean I've got it as a small leg in a round robin. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's the, the play there for sure, folks. Just Just book it right now. Next up, women's... Oh, fuck this. Um, Viviane <laughs> Pereira yep. against Jamie Moyle. Jay, what's, what's going on here? Nushan, I think you're going to have to put that one in the opening credits. <laughs> <laughs> that, might, that, might, that might be new... That might be Brad's new... Uh, oh, you fuck know, fatty's going to fatty right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Um, uh. Yeah. Actually, Brad, I think this is going to be one of the more entertaining uh, women's fights we'll see. Um, oh, come on now, sir. One of the more entertaining women's fights you'll see. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> you won't see many. I got Moyle no, no, no. at D-plus. I'm, Pereira is C-minus. <laughs> D-plus for Moyle. Pereira is C-minus. Pereira never been beaten. Um, she made. It, she had a pretty solid UFC debut. Um, she's got a, a pretty good wrestling game. Um, tough to take down. Um, I think she probably gets the job done against Moyle, who, you know, is a tough fighter, kind of comes at you. Um, I don't think she's going to be able to defend the takedowns. I think she's going to, it's, it's going to be tough for her to get top position in this bout. Um, but she's, uh, you know, she's a scrappy fighter. Um, and she'll make it competitive, but, um, I think Pereira gets the job done. I was kind of thinking about it for a bit, but I said, women's prelims. Yeah, weird shit tends to happen, so I will pass. So you're not going to play the over? <laughs> nah, not this time. Sean, can we? Can no, we I'm not you? even playing. I'm not even playing the over. Fuck Aww. that. It's it's minus three hundred, and yeah. I don't. I don't even want to watch this. I'm not watching this. I'm not getting paid to watch this by playing the over. Uh, just no. And I'll I'll pick the per- Pereira. Okay, that's good that. enough. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, if you couldn't tell by my introduction to this fight, I don't care. Um, Pereira's the, like, four-foot-tall one with the round face, right? Yeah. And Jamie Moyle's, like, sort of Asian? And a little uh, on the thick side? Yes. For, uh, for a 115-pound girl? Oh, yes. Like, good thick? Mm, no, not good nah. thick. Oh. <clears throat> but she's not ugly. There's uglier girls out there, especially in this <laughs> sport. Um, no, yeah, so that's my breakdown. One of them is, <laughs> is really short, and then one of them is pretty short, but not as short. So there yeah. you go. Bringing you that fucking knowledge right there. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I I have no opinion on this fight. I remember thinking that Pereira sucked, and then she beat Letourneau, which then made me think that Letourneau really sucked and didn't really make me think Pereira was any better. And I remember thinking that Moyle's not that bad. So I know the line's kind of close here, so I, I don't recommend anything. I recommend not watching this fight. Okay. Uh, moving up to uh, the Fox right Sports there. 1 <laughs> Bantamweight division. I do recommend watching this guy because he's pretty awesome. Yuri Alcantara is taking on... Brian Kelleher, who sounds like he might be a serial killer. Jay? <sighs> Stop. <laughs> I got uh, Alcantara a C and Kelleher a D plus. You know, did a bit of review on to Kelleher, but unfortunately not a lot of his fights are available. Um, you know, there are a few. You could check. Baby. Yeah, that, that shit's really fucking annoying, I gotta be honest with you. Um, are they really making enough money for it to be behind some sort of weird paywall? Doubt it. Um... Yeah, so, I mean, Kelleher's, you know, trains some pretty good fighters from Long Island, a lot of good fighters out there, moves around gyms, fought, you know, fought in CFC. Um, you know, striking's okay, but um, I don't know what to say besides he gets he, he does get subbed quite a bit, um, and athletically he's really not that good of a, you know, that good of an athlete. And he's facing a guy who's quite athletic, um, has a lot of tools in his, you know, his disposal, and um, finishes people. I mean, he's certainly getting older, Alcantara, but he's a finisher, and he's experienced. And I think Keller is going to have, you know, this is a really difficult fight for a guy making his USA debut, going to Brazil against a guy who pretty much one round finishes dudes when he fights on home turf. Um, And that's probably what happens here. I think Alcantara 
probably uh, gets a submission finish, in all honesty. Um, I think that's the most likely way he wins. Keller has been subbed, Brad, how many times? Four times yep. in his career? Yeah, yeah, I think it's four. Yeah. So, Alcantara um, is the play um, for me. Um, and if I'm going to play anything, um, it's either going to be the inside the distance or uh, the sub line. Those are the, those are the ways to look at this fight. Don't play the money line minus 350. Sean? Yep, agree with Jay. Like, this is weird matchmaking. Like, Yuri Alcantara is a, a pretty good fighter. I mean, he's ranked 13th. He, he had a, a pretty sweet come from behind win against Luke Sanders, who's a, who some people thought is pretty good. And then they gave him this random dude. Well, it was supposed to be his... Felipe Arantes. Was it? Yes. Well, on how May, long 11th, was... May 11th, he was pulled out of the fight. I'm reading it now. No, I guess so. It's, it's been like two weeks, three weeks. Either way, Arantes is probably in over his head in this fight, too. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess it's a bit of late notice, but I, I think they could find somebody a little bit better. But, yeah, guy making his debut in Brazil against a, a beast of a guy in the first round. I think Al- Alcantara subs him. Yeah, I like Alcantara here as well. Um, Kelleher... If you just look at his records, he's got quite a few subs himself, so you would think, you know, he's a, a pretty decent grappler. But most, or pretty much all of his subs are guillotines um, or rear naked chokes, which, you know, anybody can do a rear naked choke. Um, but his other subs are, are guillotines, so he's kind of a specialist in that regard. And he is nowhere near the the, the grappler that Yuri Alcantara is. And Alcantara is a, a pretty dynamic striker, too. We've seen him rock a whole bunch of guys, and he's one of those dudes that after he rocks somebody, he jumps on them and looks for a submission rather than uh, going right for the, the strikes to, to finish them off. So he probably gets the, the sub, or yeah, probably gets the sub here, um, but just to be safe, uh, there's only a 30 cent difference between inside the distance and sub. So if he decides this is the one time where he wants to just lay in some extra shots on the guy, or if he just puts him out on the uh, the initial shot that he lands, uh, it, it's better to be a little bit safe than you know trying to get too greedy and, and go for uh, the sub. I, I know a lot of guys are proponents of playing only inside the distance. Me personally, I usually go the other way, and, and if there's a lot of extra value, I'll play the specific prop uh, but in a case like this where the lines are so close it doesn't make sense to to give up you know a, a decent shot of winning for 30 cents so Alcantara inside the distance is what I like I also think he gets it done quick so you know you could look at the the round one prop which is like plus 300 but Yuri Alcantara inside the distance that is going to be our second five dimes dot eu consensus play of the night and uh, our final 5 dimeseu consensus play of the night. So head over there and uh, look for dudes named Alcantara and, and bet them to win. Cause that's and that one's a happen. full play. And that is a full play. That's why I didn't mention anything. I only <laughs> mention it if it's a half play. Touche, Brad. <laughs> um, but head over to 5 dimeseu Look for dudes named Alcantara. Bet them inside the distance or sub. It's, it's going to work out for you. Uh, next up. We are in the bantamweight division once again. Johnny Eduardo, who, as I'm sure Joe Rogan will tell you about 30 times during the fight, is the striking coach at Nova Uniao, taking on Matthew Lopez, who's... He he seems like an MMA lab guy. Is he an MMA lab guy, Jay? (sighs) Uh, I should know this. No, he's Rain. 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 Okay. Which, yeah. Does Rain even from... exist anymore? Rain doesn't exist no. anymore, I don't think. So Unless... I, I think he might be in MMA Lab. I know he's from Arizona, so it would fit. He would Why fit. He? Anyways, you, you can break it down. Yeah, I got both these guys to see. Um, it, this fight really comes down to Johnny Eduardo um, to me. Um, when he's When he's on, he's quite good. But if he looks sluggish or he can't get his striking off, he is he just he basically looks lackluster and kinda gives up on fights. And Lopez is a guy who's gonna come he's gonna kinda come after you, he's gonna be aggressive looking for takedowns, he's a capable grappler. Um pretty good wrestler actually. 
Um, and, he, and he could win in that way. So that's why I think why Matt Lopez is favored. I think people favor... I th- maybe I shouldn't say that. People definitely favor strikers because they think that's like the cool thing. But um, grappling has proven more effective in mixed martial arts as a whole than just being a striker. And I think that's why Matt Lopez is favored to win. Um, I'll pick him because of that um, as well. But, you know, could Eduardo catch him? Yeah, absolutely. So th- this one, I think, is a, a, a difficult fight to bet, in all honesty. Sean? Johnny Eduardo, the guy who only the only fighter who fights less than Khabib, is uh, <laughs> fighting I'll for. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna fight for uh, his one his one fight a year. You know he's gonna get out of the way halfway through the year, so then he can he can enjoy the rest of the year. Um, he still who shows knows? up to fight more often than Lance shows up to podcast though. That is That's true. That's not saying much. <laughs> That's not saying much though. That's the problem with that. Um, yeah, Johnny Eduardo is good when he gets his when he fights, when he actually fights, and when he doesn't look like shit, but who knows? Um, Matthew Lopez, in his in his UFC career, was kind of a weird booking to put him against Hani Yaya, considering Hani Yaya is such a capable grappler. He was kind of in a, a no-win situation there. Um, and then took a decision from Mitch Gagnon. Um, he should win, but like Jay said, he could get cracked. I'll probably... Uh, I'll probably take Eduardo for the dog odds and tout master, but I ain't betting him. Yeah, I, I'm kind of leaning towards Eduardo here. Um, it's a tricky fight, but uh, I think that if you look at, even on the feet, Yaya was able to land a little bit against Lopez. <clears throat> Genyom was able to land uh, early against Lopez. So as long as Eduardo goes out there and is willing to pull the trigger... I think he definitely lands against Lopez as well. So I, I like him for that reason. But it's, it's it's pretty tough to bet just because you know that there is the chance that Eduardo is going to go out there and not pull the trigger. So uh, it, it could be possible that Lopez is able to get inside on him, get him down to the ground, and just control from top position. So I'll, I'll, pick, Lo, or I'll pick Eduardo... Not really looking for it as a bet right now, uh, but we'll see how the line continues to move and and see where this fight goes. Next up, we are in the middleweight division. We got some shoe face against Eric Spicely. Jay? Yeah, I got Carlos Jr., a C minus, Eric Spicely, a D plus. Both these guys are at, at their best on the ground, controlling opponents. Um, Carlos Jr. is just a lot bigger than Eric Spicely. Um, and, and way more physical. Um, that should get him the job done, but I still can't get over that Carlos Jr. fight against Daniel Kelly where he where he basically got tired and shit the bed. Um, that bothers me, and I, I think forever I can never bet Antonio Carlos Jr. He's got to do like four fights in a row of like very good things before I could get confidence in him again. I think I bet him last fight against... Wasn't he like even money against that, that dude? It was like Who are you some... talking about? Carlos Jr. I don't remember who he fought last time. Vittori. Some, uh, Ger- or Italian guy. Var- oh! Vittori. Yeah. Decision. Vittori. Oh, yeah. And, that was the last... I was like, like, I know he's lost some fights, but goddamn, yeah. he's he's even money against this dude? Yeah. So, anyways, continue. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, Sean, you can continue. That's what Dan Kelly does. He ruins your career, and people think you're just absolutely garbage. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pretty much. Uh, Chris Camozzi, and then he actually ruins your career. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Shoe Face, I mean, he's got the grappling advantage. He should be able to get Spicely down, or if he wants to, I think he can actually outstrike Spicely. Um, but, I mean, we've all kind of been underestimating Spicely after the Tiago Santos uh, shitty thing that happened. Um <laughs> I'm not going to back shoe face because, like, Jay, I lost too much money against him against Dan Kelly. So I think he should win, and he has a lot of advantages in this fight, but I am not going to do that. Sorry, I was starting to, to watch the, the basketball game there. Um, yeah. Well, you like I to think, see guys miss layups after layups? Yeah, it's yeah. pretty ugly. <laughs> uh, what the hell is going on? As well, that's what happens when you don't play for two weeks. Fouling people on every single layup attempt and never getting called for it. 
Uh, yeah, we're oh. back to that. Yep. And LeBron's traveling, you know. <laughs> that was a travel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyways, I, this fight, I see two guys who basically want to do the same thing. They both want to grapple from top position. One guy is better at that thing, that shoe face. One guy is also physically superior in pretty much every aspect. That is also shoe face. So, you know, I, I think the cardio issues were oversold based on the Dan Kelly fight because we know he takes people's souls. Uh, so hard to, to put too much stock in that. His cardio looked pretty decent against Vittori, who, you know, is a young guy that, that seems to have a lot of energy in his fights. So I'm not too concerned about him gassing out by being on top of Eric Spicely for three rounds. I think that uh, Shoeface takes a, a pretty clear decision in this one. Next up, we are back in the bantamweight division. Good fight here. Rafael Sunsau is welcoming WSOF champion or pro fighter league champion, whatever the fuck they're calling themselves now, Marlon Moraes to the UFC. Jay? Yeah, this is a really intriguing fight. Um, I got a Sun Tzu and A minus, and Rice kind of hard to grade because of the competition level. I mean, it's it's hard for me to bring in someone to the UFC as an A minus grade, but I find these guys pretty even, all honestly. And I think this kind of is going to be very similar to like yeah. a Jotko versus David Branch fight, where you know going in, you know, it's going to be a really close fight that's going to go to decision. I don't see either guy finishing. They're both. Pretty darn durable. Um, a Sun Tzu in particular hasn't been finished. It's, it seems like forever. I think it's six years. Um, and Sun Tzu himself has fought like excellent competition and fared pretty well. I mean, look at his. I mean, you could go back to his fights. He hasn't really ever really been dominated per se. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess you know the Dillashaw fight he got beat pretty badly, but um, he still he he puts himself in every fight. And it's going to be close. Um, so I, I find it hard to justify making a bet on Marais at minus 170. I mean, really, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to play juice on either guy. Um, I think it's close. Um, and it's, I think it's really hard to pick a winner. I think it's really going to come down to how the judges uh, particularly see it. So um, I'm not going, to, not going to sit here and kid, tell you, oh, I think, um, you know, Marais is going to be more aggressive. He's going to win the fight. I mean, I really don't know. Um, you know, Sun Tzu is a counter striker. Um, so maybe that plays a part, um, how effectively he'll be able to counter Marais' striking. Um, but, and maybe that's how it comes down to which, which do the judges favor the counter, you know, how the Sun Tzu counters or how Marais kind of comes after you. Um, and without knowing who the judges are and their tendencies, tough to pick a winner. I was going to say the judges are going to be in Brazil, so... But both these guys yep. are Brazilian, so it doesn't really, exactly doesn't make too much of a difference. Sean, what you got here? This is a very, very tough fight for a guy coming in to the UFC. Um, a Sun Tzu is a, is a tough guy, like Jay said, and and stylistically, he's always in pretty, pretty boring, you know, just gritty fights. And uh, Marais, I mean, he he does have some very good technique, and he he looks very skilled, but. This is far and away the best fighter that he will have faced in his entire career, and it's not even close. Um, when Sun Tzu was in the plus 180, plus 170 range, I, I think that's that's pretty crazy. Um, and this is this is a bet for me. I, I'm not going huge on a Sun Tzu, but this is a, a bet for me that I know on a Sun Tzu. I know who he is. I know he's a tough. It's going to be a close fight. And I, I have to think there's value on on a Sun Sal, and I, I got him at plus 170. It's it's come down a little bit since then, but this is gonna be a tough fight, and I'll uh, I'll pick a Sun Sal and Tote Master. Yeah, I'm I'm hesitantly on a Sun Sal as well. I agree with you guys that this is just a really big jump for Marlon Moraes. Uh, I think his the best opponent he's faced previously was. Josh Hill, we we sort of agreed on. Um, you know, he's also fought the the corpse of Miguel Torres and uh, and stuff like that. So, you know, he really hasn't faced a lot of UFC caliber opponents. Never mind guys who are in the top five of their division in the UFC. So, I know that he's on a, a massive winning streak and. 
Uh, for some reason, people want guys coming into the UFC to to ma- right jump into these uh, these top level fights. But I think it would have been a a better idea to give Marlon Moraes like Brian Kelleher or something like that, and have a Sun Sao face Yuri Alcantara, um, where Moraes could start to get some wins under his belt in the UFC. Build him up. Exactly. You get Brad. him known to the, the UFC fans who honestly have no clue who this guy is. You know, they're gonna see him come in and they're gonna be like, Oh, it's it's that's some guy making his UFC debut. Um they they don't care about Marlon Marias, so have him win a couple fights, make them care, and then put him in this big spot. But I think this is gonna be a little bit too much too soon for him. Uh, I know the guy's 29, so you don't have unlimited time to get him there, but guys can progress pretty quickly through the UFC if they look impressive, and this is going to be a very, very difficult fight for him to look impressive in. So I like a Sun Tzu. I think that the striking's going to be close. A Sun Tzu's counter game is really, really strong. Um, he makes it very difficult for guys to get a lot of offense in on him. And uh, a Sun Sao can probably mix it up and throw in a takedown or two if he needs to to, to salt away close rounds. So I'll take a Sun Sao in a, a close fight. Moving up to the main card, we're going to kick it off in the welterweight division. The aforementioned cardio machine, Eric Silva, taking on Yancy Medeiros. Jay? Yeah, um, I got both these guys uh, C minus. Um, which is a real fall from grace, especially for Eric Silva, who I think I had as a, a B at one point, or a B minus. I, I think that's where he maxed out. Um, but Silva proves he he's just not... Good. Gross. Another guy who likes to, yeah, he comes out hard um, and falls apart too. Uh, he's not a he's not a third round warrior either. So this is going to be a kill or be killed kind of fight. Really tough to bet either side, honestly, because they're both so vulnerable to being finished. Um, but it just seems like this fight has to go to a finish. I mean, it's it's this going 15 minutes would be one of the most surprising things to happen on this card. I. I just don't see it otherwise. Um, I'll take Eric Silva. I just have this weird feeling Madero's going to get caught in a choke. Um, He's been caught in the past, and I remember the Jim Miller fight specifically, um, and I kind of have that feeling it's going to happen here. Eric Silva's really good at latching on chokes um, really early in fights. Um, I can see that happening, but, man, um, how can you really bet Eric Silva at any sort of juice? I mean, he's a dog here, but... He was juice at one point, right, Brad? Yeah, he opened uh, yeah, minus one hundred and fifty. Yeah. yeah. Look at that new Sean on the ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, your thoughts, Sean? Uh, Eric Silva hasn't lost in Brazil in like three and a half years. Um, he does seem to show up for the most part, but I mean, obviously, there's a bunch of asterisks there. You know, Usada, <laughs> all that fun stuff. Um, I get he did he didn't quit in his last fight. I think that's an improvement for uh for, for Eric Silva. Like Chagas got him early, but he didn't get out of there and he actually pulled through in the third. Um Maderos, you know, he he was a pretty big punching bag against Grandpa Trinaldo. Somehow that fight didn't get stopped. And then obviously he did a little bit better against Sean Spencer, you know, he was able to get a finish there. Um, I think I'm just going to have to go with, with Silva in Brazil. You know, it's kind of the, the thing to do. He does seem to win there. And um, now that he's a dog, I mean, he it has moved a bunch. I might actually put a little bet on him, even though it's uh, <laughs> Eric Silva in 2017. That is a risky proposition, sir. That's uh, why it's a small bet. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Uh, I'm on the other side. I think that Medeiros is going to be able to get this done. And the biggest reason is kind of how much damage he was able to absorb in that uh, Grandpa Trinaldo fight. You know, you look at uh, a guy like uh, Eric Silva, 
not a lot of times he's been able to take a, a ton of damage and come back. I know that he showed a little bit of heart in the the Shagas fight, but that was mostly just two guys getting super gassed and sloppy, and then he fell into a rear naked choke in the third round. So I think Medeiros is going to have a little bit left after, or a little bit more left after the first round, uh, and he's going to be able to eventually put Eric Silva away. At minus 145, do I like it for a bet? No. Um, Earlier in the week, Madero's inside the distance was at like plus 240, plus 250 in that range. I think even that's down to plus 160, so can't play that either. So this is just going to be a pass, and hopefully it's a fun pay-per-view opener for us. Next up, we are in the middleweight division. I always forget what division this dude's in, but... Paulo Boracinha. Uh, we, we've had this discussion before. He's a middle way. A little drunk, it's A little right? drunk. A little, little drunk. drunk. Yeah. He's, He's a rubber man, man, but we've got a little rubber drunk. guy, right? <laughs> no, yeah. it's a little yeah. drunk, Jay. We've, we've been over yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> because Portuguese and Spanish are actually the same thing. It's true. Hopefully your wife's not listening to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Like but little drunk's taking on Uchiwali Bangbus. Jay, this uh, uh, should be fun. Yeah, uh, we got we got Miami's finest against um, you know drunk Brazilian. I mean, it, it feels like they should be on the same show, right? At least they're fighting each other. Um, I got Bang Bus, uh D plus, Borachinho, C minus. Um, we've seen very little of Borachinho. I mean, his clips before the UFC were pretty impressive, and his UFC debut was super impressive. But it's one fight, and now he's like what, like a three to one favorite. Um, over Bang Bus, a little scary, but um, he certainly seems more durable than Bang Bus, and that means a lot. But both these guys, you know, excel at finishing early, um, and it seems like that's what's going to happen here. Um, one of these guys is going to finish. I think it's going to be Boracinha because he's just shown me to be um, even more aggressive than Bang Bus is, and just just a, a better striker. Um, just better tools um, than what Bang Bus has to offer. So I think Brazil gets it done on home turf, and it's going to be fast um, inside of three minutes. Sean? Yeah, a little drunk has nine wins, no losses, eight subs, one TKO, all in the first round. This dude is is built like an absolute fucking tank, and who knows if, if it, it goes long. Um but I don't expect it to go long at all. Um, Bang Bus is uh, is happy to oblige. He probably wants to do the exact same thing, just sling and bang. I don't know what other way he expects to win. So this could be carnage forever, long at last. And uh, yeah, it's it's hard not to to see a little drunk uh, getting the job done. Yeah, it, it seems it. like Lil Drunk definitely has some uh, some magma dripping out of his pores. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's in Brazil. Oh, yeah. all of the magma. So I fully expect him to get this done and get it done quickly. However, I, I felt the need to point out, you know, Brad's line of the week that doesn't make sense. And if you pull open the props for this fight, Bang Bus by TKO is. What did we say? Plus three seventy. I mean, it's the only is, way he wins. Yeah, you know, I I understand that. So Bang Bus by TKO is plus three seventy, but Bang <laughs> Bus in round one is plus five twenty five. So I know the yeah. TKO is the only way he wins, but really, isn't a TKO in the first round probably how he's going to win if he TKOs him? Because we've seen his I fights mean, before. Maybe he doesn't offer a whole lot, so. I, I guess I can see the reasoning if Lil Drunk has terrible, awful cardio, you know, and he fades and, and Bang Bus is somehow able to just put a couple shots on him late in the fight. But, you know, I, I don't think there should be a dollar fifty difference between those two lines. And there goes my alarm. That's good stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and that was the alarm to move on to the next fight. So, middleweight division. That's fair. We've got, uh, you know, back when Randy Couture fought Mark Coleman, it it was basically a, an audition for the movie The Expendables, right? Um, 
I think so. Yeah, yeah. So this fight is they're making another Expendables movie. They need another old fighter to fill a role in the movie. So Guitar. they're like, hey, let's throw two old guys together, and whoever wins gets to be in the movie. So Vitor, Nate, <laughs> go. Right. So, you know, based on previous performances, I mean, it's fairly understandable that Vitor would be a very slim favorite over Mark. Or we're talking about two guys who've looked really bad in their last three, four, five fights. I mean, maybe even going back further. But what's not being accounted for in the line is what if TRT Belfort shows up, Brad? Because <laughs> if you're willing to bet on that, I mean, if you think Vitor's going to knock him out as is, oh, that was just ridiculous. Sorry. <laughs> it's basketball game, something else already. Yeah, um, nobody yeah. can hit a layup, but they can all hit threes and, and dunks over everybody. There's, there's been like six poster dunks already. It's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Right, so I—I I mean, I think Vitor wins anyway because his even his much his blitz, his 2017 blitz is still enough to beat Nate Marquardt. But what I think is going to happen is there's going to be some some TRT action going on with Vitor, which in, in my mind makes him like a five to one favorite, right? I mean, maybe not that big, but it's big enough. Like if. If he has any of that explosion that he's had when he's been on the good stuff, Nate's going to be so toast. He's going to, he's going to, he's just, you know, when when the opening bell happens, Nate's just going to lay down and say, ref, stop the fight. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to take a punch. I, I know what's happening here. So Vitor's going to win, and um, yeah, he's going to win by first round knockout because that's what Vitor Belfort does. And I got to bet on Vitor at one unit, uh, minus 125. Sean? Yeah, I like Vitor in this fight as well. Um, Mark Wart, his his last two wins against CB Dalloway and McCrory, he he's, he got somewhat lucky in both of them. I mean, it's not luck, but whatever. He got he didn't do well in the first round of each of those fights. And I mean, Vitor is not CB Dalloway or Ten 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 and McCrory. Um, if if he doesn't come out. Um, you know, guard up and and ready to go. Vitor is going to put him out, and and that's what I expect to happen. Um, I got Vitor when it was minus one twenty five, like Jay. When it was nice and low, it's it's kind of moved in there. Um, that blitz that he put on Gaslam that puts out Nate Marquardt. Nate Marquardt is still an absolute glass jaw. He should have retired a long time ago, and he's still going to get more brain damage. Um, but at least it's God on God violence in this one. So <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> I like Vitor to, to smash in the first. Mama, we did it. We back. <laughs> I, hopefully he goes back to that, uh, the classic Vitor post-fight interview after he blitzes Nate Marquardt within the first minute and knocks him out because... That's uh, That seems like a very Vitor Belfort thing to do in this spot in Brazil. In and Brazil, yeah. the fact that Nate Marquardt is very much uh, a tentative fighter until he knows that his opponent doesn't pose him a threat. So Vitor does, and Vitor is still threatening to a lot of guys in the first round. And he's going to get it done here. Next up, this is... Uh, I meant to mention this at the start of the podcast, but there's a, a weird delineation between... There's your word of the day, delineation, by the way. Write it down. Yep. Uh, between good fights and fights that I want to watch. Mm. This women's strawweight fight is a good fight. As you notice, I didn't even say, oh, shit, when I was saying women's strawweight, because this is actually a good fight. However... Not too interested in watching it. it it's not. Well, the there's a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we've got Claudia Gadelia taking on Karolina Kovalkiev. Oh, yeah, Kovalkiewicz. Mm hmm. Yeah, Jay? Koala Bear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got Claudia an A, Carolina an A minus. Claudia. Here's the thing with Claudia. She's the best three-round fighter um, in the strawweight division. She beat 
Joanna the first time they fought three rounds, and if the second fight was three rounds, she would have gotten that fight too. Um, if this fight was five rounds, it might be different, but Claudia's going to win the first two rounds, and that's the difference. She's going to be able to take down Carolina. Carolina doesn't have as good a takedown defense as Joanna has, and I don't I don't think she's going to be able to win. She's going to be down 2018, and she's going to need to finish, and that's not going to happen. So Claudia wins. If it was five rounds, maybe I think differently because Claudia's had some some serious cardio issues in the past. But um, in three rounds, that's not gonna that's not gonna be the case. So I think Claudia wins here, and I'm pretty confident that's gonna happen. I haven't bet it yet, but it's um, it's something I'm thinking about. I had to hold in some sort of noise during that Kyrie layup. <laughs> that was ridiculous. <laughs> that's, the finish at the rim of that guy is obscene. Oh, man. Uh, oh, well, Sean, course, anyway, so. what do you got here? Like Jay said, Claudia is the best three-round fighter in this division, and I don't. I think it's fairly easy to say that. If this was a five-round fight, this would be drastically, drastically different odds. Um, I expect Claudia to, to get uh, Koala Bear down in the first, second. She might even get her down in the third. Like... Claudia is an extremely good grappler, and Koala Bear doesn't have anywhere near the takedown defense that Joanna does. I mean, she's got decent takedown defense, but nothing like Joanna. Um, I think Cla- Claudia is going to show that she's easily the second best fighter in this division again. But um, I played the over, even though it's pretty outrageously priced. I don't. I don't think uh, Claudia is going to be able to finish her because Kovacavich is tough. Um, I got the over at minus 335, but it's it's going over, and Claudia is going to win, and I think it's going to be fairly easy. Yeah, I kind of agree with you guys. This fight seems pretty straightforward. and The only way we could uh, really hope for any excitement is I was looking at props earlier in the week, as I do, and Claudia by sub was at plus 940 um, back on Tuesday or Wednesday, I think, which I thought was a little ridiculous because she's probably the the best submission artist in this division. Uh, it's just that when you're fighting Joanna all the time, who's got an extremely good get-up game and extremely good takedown defense, you don't really get much of a chance to show that off. So... Um, I think that she's going to have more time in settled top control where she can advance position, get some damage with her ground and pound, and and maybe look for submission opportunities against Kovacavich. So uh, I wouldn't be shocked if we did see a submission, but as both guys said, it's more than likely that uh, Claudia just ends up taking her down and uh, getting a decision victory here. So that is the route that I think things are going to go. And finally, main event, featherweight division. To me, this is one of the best fights of the year. Should be a fun fight. Should be a high-level fight. Two guys that are are very talented in multiple aspects of the game. And one guy who is one of the best fighters ever. And we're going to make sure that nobody calls Jose Aldo by his Mexican name that's even people who watch MMA all the time still like to do, which infuriates yeah, me to know. <laughs> I'm, I'm with Brad. That's ridiculous. Anyways, Jay, go ahead. I got both these guys in A++, actually. So they're like two of my top six or seven guys in the sport currently. Um, overall, um, I really do think that highly of Max Holloway is on a 10-fight winning streak, being a lot of quality competition. Cub, um... Anthony Pettis, Ricardo Lamas, and he's dominated those guys. Um, I believe his last loss was to Conor McGregor, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. It was. Yeah. Yeah, I actually saw that fight live. Now that I now that I think about it, um, it was a weird fight. Um, actually, because Conor tore his knee and actually laid on Max, which is weird. Um, <laughs> and Max hasn't been taken down in a fight, I think, in like two and a half or three years. Um, so he's certainly improved a lot there, um, but. This one, for me, comes down to, to volume. Um, Aldo certainly is a better kicker. Um, he's going to try to chop the lead leg of Holloway. I think Holloway is continued pressure and just striking volume, and or and the, the combinations, though, are going to be a lot for Aldo to deal with. Um, 
Also, Aldo's used to dealing with much smaller opponents. He hasn't had to face that many bigger fighters. And Max is definitely the bigger fighter. Um, just seeing the way in, or not the way in, just, you know, they just had a standoff, I guess, today. And Max is definitely a, a bit bigger than Aldo. So that's going to be a different kind of a test for Jose. Um, but, I mean, Jose is, you know, he's had that one blink against Connor, and he looked really darn good in the, the Frankie Edgar fight, but I, I kind of think Max is kind of the next guy, and I think he could beat Aldo on volume. Um, I don't think it's a lock or anything, um, but I think he might be the guy, um, you know, to, to really put the pressure on Aldo. Um, and he has the size and, the, you know, the strength to, to deal with him. Um, so I think Max gets it done, likely on points, and which is going to be tough to win in Brazil. But I think there might be rounds that are big enough for him. Um, and if there is a finish, and that's the way I'm looking at the fight, um, Holloway no scorecards I think is the best way because, I mean, Max has really never been in trouble. He's got a granite chin. Um, he's really never been in trouble in any fights. He's certainly more durable than Jose Aldo is. Um, and pretty much everybody in this division. I don't know, Jay. Um, he well. seemed pretty in trouble when uh, Dustin Poirier was about to rip his arm off. Yeah, that's subs here. It's <laughs> <laughs> the last time Aldo stumped anybody. <laughs> Wait for it. Wait for it. Anyway, that's the way I look at it. Um, I haven't bet that yet, but um, it's the line I'm considering. <laughs> and Just got to give you shit. Sean, what do you got here? I really like Aldo here, and especially at the price I'm getting. I got him at um, minus one ten, minus one hundred five. What? And minus one twenty five. Yeah. Yeah. But I got him at minus one hundred five. It's pretty ridiculous that he was that price. Honestly, Max, wait, before you get into your up? breakdown, <laughs> yeah, I would have to go, even including Conor McGregor. I would have to go up to welterweight before there's a fighter I would favor against Jose Aldo. I'm, I'm not even being, like, a, a fanboy dick about it. It's just his style and the, the skills his that he's really is, good at. Yep. It would be very difficult for anybody to, to beat him. Continue. Yep. Yeah. Um, Holloway is very good. He's on an unbelievable streak. Um, but Jose Aldo is, is the best featherweight there's ever been. He... Uh, I, I'm expecting him to attack Holloway's legs, and that's going to slow down his pressure and his uh, his movement. And that's when when Aldo's going to be able to take over. Um, Aldo looked absolutely phenomenal against Edgar, and we think the world of, of Frankie Edgar. Um, I know people talk about the size difference between these two. It's really not that big a difference. Like, I mean, yeah. Holloway is taller, but it's not obscenely tall, like it's an inch or two, and Holloway doesn't even have the reach advantage in this fight. He's got short arms for being so tall. Um, Aldo has a ridiculous ground game. He never shows it, but he also usually is fighting against wrestlers who want to take him down, and he, he doesn't want to put himself in that situation, and he believes that he can outstrike anybody. Here he might actually take down Holloway, and who knows what he can do on the ground because his his jujitsu is elite, even though we never see it. Um, I don't think he's going to do that. I think he's just going to strike. I mean, he might take down Holloway and 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 do some damage there, but I don't think he's going to be able to get a finish there. Um, I bet the over four and a half at minus one forty. I think. Um, and then I bet Jose Aldo, or Jose Aldo, not Jose, oh, Jose Aldo. You're almost fired right there. <laughs> I know. At, uh, at minus 105 and minus 125, I think he's just, the leg kicks are just going to be too much. Um, and, and that volume is just going to go, go way down when he can barely walk. Yeah, I think it's no secret that I am a, a big, big fan of Jose Aldo, uh, one of my favorite fighters of all time, one of the best fighters of all time, and Holloway does present some difficulties for him. Uh, if Holloway just is able to unleash the sort of pressure that he's often been able to put on guys, that is going to be trouble for Aldo. 
Um, even though he showed the best counter game of his entire life in the Frankie fight, uh, I think he's a little bit more equipped now to deal with Holloway or a guy like Holloway than he would have been a couple years ago. Uh, I still think that if he just lets Holloway dictate the pace of this fight, it's going to be a tough fight for him. Uh, luckily, he has a significant speed advantage over Holloway, so I think he's going to be able to get off first and last in, in pretty much every exchange. Uh, he should be able to use his leg kicks to control the distance a little bit, uh, since Holloway will be marching forward right into those leg kicks, and we know that people can only take a couple of those before things start to, to go downhill quickly. Uh, and then there's the threat of takedowns. Uh, we know that Aldo has a very, very underrated offensive wrestling game, uh, in addition to you know probably the best ever defensive wrestling that we've seen in MMA. So I think he can get takedowns on Holloway, who's shown improved takedown defense, which Jay said, but that's against a lot of guys that are looking to take him down and don't present the kind of threat on the feet that Jose Aldo is going to present to him. So Holloway is going to have a lot to think about in this fight, whereas Aldo is really only going to have to think about, you know, how do I not let this guy control the range against me? And if he can do that, it should actually be a, a fairly simple fight for him. Uh, so if he can use those leg kicks, if he can get off first in exchanges, uh, I think that that is going to limit a lot of what Holloway wants to do. And then he can throw in a, a takedown every now and then in order to just keep Holloway off balance. Uh, if he does those things, I like Aldo to win a decision. I'd like to say that you know Aldo by submission at plus 950 or whatever price it's at uh, has some life as well, but that's just... Uh, you know, me seeing a big number and, and trying to justify a, a reason to play it. Uh, I think that the the play here is Aldo, if you got him near even money, honestly, even at the minus 145 that it's at right now, I wouldn't be too opposed to it. Uh, and I think he takes a decision. So Aldo by decision is plus 160, plus 170. Again, that's down from the 200 that it was uh, earlier in the week. But uh, I, I still think that's a, a very likely outcome in this fight. So Jose Aldo picks up the win, becomes the uh, undisputed featherweight champion again, and uh, everything is as it should be in the UFC's featherweight division. Gentlemen, that's going to do it for our UFC 212 breakdown. Uh, a little bit quicker one with uh, only three people on the card, or breaking down the card this week. We should have all four of us back next week for the UFC's return to, as Mike Goldberg likes to call it, Oakland, New Zealand. I hope the, uh, the NBA oh, finals fuck. are still going on. There, there might be a conflict there with the Warriors. Trying, yeah. Trying to get into Oakland, right? At the Oakland Oracle <laughs> Arena. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's going to be Derek Lewis, Mark Hunt, and my boy. Old man Judo Dead. Dan Kelly picking up another in excess of plus 200 underdog win against Derek Brunson. That should be fun. Guys, anything to close out with before we sign off for the evening? No. All right. Go enjoy the basketball or hockey or French Open or whatever the hell it is you're watching right now. And we will be back with you next week for UFC Fight Night 110, Lewis Hunt. Have a good one.